Hey everyone, welcome back to the stream, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video, part, oh I'm losing track now, maybe even part 7, might be part 7, doing these guys here, that's the uh, F4 Phantoms, um, both the B and the D, and uh, yeah, we're doing one as the ROKAF, and the other as a US version, so let's get started. you guys who watch my channel you already knew that right um, so I did manage to get the fuselage front and rear put together on the Academy version um, got the intake ducts put in got the engines put in so what I wound up doing is I added a little piece of styrene as you can see right here in the middle classic fighters yes you are that is true um, I added a piece of styrene right here simply because when putting the front half into the rear half there was nothing to keep it nice and flush it could just you know do that it just goes up like this and there was nothing to keep it actually flush so I just glued a piece of styrene to the rear part here first, let that set, then put it in and glued it down and yeah, there was still a little bit of a gap all the way around that would be a very significant visual cue um, if I had left it. So I took some of Vallejo's plastic putty, put it in there and good enough just filled in that little gap that it will be a significant panel line but at least it's not a gap anymore um, but of course this thing will be sitting down like this and so you probably won't see it ever anyway so it doesn't really matter so with that being done and we're sitting there like this it's time to uh, go back to the Tamiya kit and get working on that so we're going to start working on getting the assembled the main landing gear bay on the Tamiya kit and possibly get the wings put together and then we'll, we're going to work on the pilot seats or the ejection seats all right we will get to those so let me grab my Tamiya instructions here as we did last time, we got all these holes drilled out of the main lower wing part and that finishes off this page and now we start with this, okay? So let's put this aside just for now along with our, our uppers and we're going to work on this guy. So I did take one piece off the sprue last time. That's got to go in and it's got to go in face this the right way and uh, I'm gonna just turn this down just a second okay um, this guy he's got to go in right here it looks like he's got a little notches to go on each side let me change the camera for you there we go okay so this guy's got to go in basically along the back wall here it looks like Looks like there's a couple of notches, one right here and one right here, where these little notches are going to go in. And it looks like it only faces one direction. Yes, it does. So let's line that up there. Oh, it slots in there just absolutely perfect. I cannot complain about that at all. The only complaint I would have is that I didn't do any weathering on there so I need to do that I'll do a quick and dirty little panel line detail on here make that pop out 
and I'm gonna cheat and not even let it dry. And just give it a wipe. That's good enough. Let's put that back in here. All right. Okay. So that piece is in, just like that. We've got these guys to go in now. This is off our pea tree, remember? So let's start with 13 and 6. <laughs> Let me change my glasses here. <sighs> okay. 13, this guy here. Number six. All right. So we're looking at this. This has to go like this, or maybe it's like this. Looks like it's this. This is a cross member. That's going to go right across here. Looks like. but I've got to turn this around. <laughs> now it's making a little more sense. This little nub here is going to go into that slot. Or is it? Once you get it lined up like you're supposed to, it looks like they're not really showing. Ah, you know why? Because I have it upside down. Flip. Now this makes sense. Boom. Now it fits in absolutely perfect. And now I also realize I need to paint the other side of this. See, I didn't know this was going to go in like that. And so I only painted one side. Wow, that really fits tight. See, I didn't paint this side. I only painted this side. So I gotta paint both sides. Um, how about this guy? This guy's a little wall. And he goes like this. And gets lined up just like so. Now him, I don't need to worry about. I need to grab my paint and I need to throw some paint onto this side of that wall. So let's do that. And I'm going to grab my tweezers and let's do that. And now that'll hold it for me. One quick little spray, that should be plenty enough. Just to give it that white. Now, just looking at the next step, we have these other ones, but they look like they're gonna go across this wall also. That's these guys. 
it looks like there might be detail there that I need to allow so so just as a preemptive thing I gave them a shot of paint too so there we go by the time I actually get those off of the sprue the paint should be dry all right, let's put this guy back in his home where he wanted to go before. Just like that. Okay. So in similarity to the Academy kit, we are building the walls of our landing gear bay. The thing that's not similar though is we have a pre-constructed frame that we didn't have with the Academy kit. Right? So I would say we're already on better footing than with the Academy kit because it was a little bit flimsy. You guys saw me build that. And now I don't have to worry about that with this one. I'm just literally putting pieces against the walls and through there with a nice good anchor on each side. That's really great. So let's grab the other two. We want P5 and P14. So there's number five. Those two. And similar fashion, this guy's going to go like this. And this guy is going to slot down. have no complaint it's a tight fit but it fits perfectly shout out to Tamiya engineers and sculptors thank you for the precision that you do in your kits Okay, so those are in, that's that. So looking down at the next part, now they want us to put this piece onto the lower part. We're gonna take a look here, XF71 is flat white, so they want a little shot of white in here. So let's do that. That's not right, XF71, what is 71? Hold up, hold up, XF-71. See, I missed that. I didn't mark that down. XF-71 is cockpit green. Oh. So they want that just trimmed all the way around here. Just on the edge. They show it here on the underside this tiny little lip here. They want cockpit green. And then of course on the inside they want you to do it also. I have my cockpit green here. And I have a brush. So, I can do that detail now. I'm 
sure that's mixed up pretty good. And uh, won't have to worry about it. Classic Fighters and hi, hi Mega Boy. Welcome back to the channel, Mega Boy. Welcome back, Uala. I actually haven't heard from Uala in a long time. kind of detail that, well, you probably wind up having to mask this off later. Funny enough, I don't remember having to paint this. like this when I built the 30, 132nd scale version of this plane. You know, I do have a bigger one of these that I paint, that I built. It feels like it's been a year already since I built that one. That was built on a request from my subscriber, one of my subscribers, and uh, simply he requested it because he wanted to build that exact plane, that exact version himself, and asked if I would build one, and so I did. Oh, Raiders, welcome! <laughs> Welcome, guys. Wow. I haven't had a raid in a long time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Hey, War Duck. Nice to see you. Caster, all you guys, welcome. Airplane, ugh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're doing the F4 Phantoms. At least it isn't a car. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, that's the way it goes. I actually uh, I did one recently. I built a top fuel dragster, um, Joe Amato's, but um, from way back in the 90s. Um, I got two cars in my list of, of builds to do, but yeah, it's uh, one of those things, right? You guys know me. I do mostly airplanes and a few tanks and of course I do the Gundams too but um, yeah okay so now that that's painted we got to put in our centerpiece let's uh, change back here so this guy's got to get put down in the center this pin is going to line up in a certain way somewhere like this. We've got our two little pins there and that's going to sit down. <laughs> Good old Tamiya quality. Sits down, doesn't argue, doesn't fight. It just sits down just like that. Perfect. No complaints. Building a 135th FW190. Oh, nice. I built a uh, very small version of that a long time ago. It was back before I was even streaming, I believe. <laughs> it's been a while. Very 
have a, we're having a debate. Is that the quick setting or it's the regular? It this is the quick setting. Yeah, my uh, label's been torn off, but yeah, this is the quick set, quick setting one. I do have the regular extra thin, but I find the this is good enough. The uh, the quick setting allows me to get it done and, and let go. Um, obviously, not quite as strong of a, as of a bond, right? Have to run. All right. Thanks, War Duck. Thanks again. Have a good one. We got a Ju87 and a BF109 on the same scale. Yeah. See you next time, War Duck. Thanks again. All right. There we go. So that's set. Perfect. Nice and strong. We got some walls to put in though. P4 and P12. Let's start with those ones off of a little sprue here. P4 and P12. So there's 4. And here's 12. There we go. I mostly build armor though. Oh yeah, that's, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that, right? You build what you like, that's the main thing, right? Okay, so we've got our shorter one. It's going to drop down over here. Let's see how she fits. Looks like I got a little nub to cut off here. There we go. Looks like that's going to go in that little hole, and then it just sits down, just like that. Oh, nice snug fit. Another scale modeler. <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> that's the way it goes. course I could be sitting in a hot tub how about that would you prefer that <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> that'd just be all kinds of wrong okay so this one has to face this direction because it's this wall two little holes there looks like these are going to line up nicely anything else is any indication oh it fits in so snug and perfect oh feels good just going in there. Take that out of context. Wow. Perfect fit. Uh, hot tub. <laughs> to be honest, it's a nice idea. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we've got those. We've got obviously got one more that's going to go in on that side there, but uh, not quite yet. So let's get the P11 and the P3. Get that going on the other side. Kind of cold here in Germany, really. I've got three 262s, a J87, two 335, B29, 25, HE50. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Oh, and they all need to be built. Wow, that's quite the list. Yeah, I have to admit, you know, I've got a little stack of my own kits that need to be built. And, uh, yeah, it's just the way it goes, right? You say, I want that one, I want that one. And so you buy them and it's like, okay, well, I'll get to that one. <laughs> and I'll get to that one. And, yeah, it, um, it's just the way it is. Okay, so, again, we're going to take this one, go on this side here, press that down in. Oh, it even snapped in. Wow. Beautiful. Cold in Germany, really. What's the temperature in Germany there? What's your name? Toshix? What's the temperature in Germany right now? I'm curious. 
I've heard it's been hot all over in uh, in Europe, European areas there. Then I've got 75 cups. Holy crap! That need to be built. What are you you stocking up your own hobby store? <laughs> wow. It was really hot, warm, really warm the last two weeks already, always rainy. Uh, this one I would say is not the best fit. It's okay though, compared to this side. That's about the same. Okay, all the walls are in, at least for this part. Uh, now we're going to put in our wings, our upper wing halves. Okay, I'm in lurk mode now. <laughs> Alright, so this has to go down on top like that. And it looks like, let me pick this up. Looks like I've got nubs to clean up from under gating. Missed that one, so that's going to come off of there. Need to build some more stuff. Yeah, I guess so, eh? Sounds like you've got enough to last you for a while. taken off that's a much better fit on there it's going around making sure everything is going to be nice and flush and it's looking pretty good um, I would say comparative to the Academy kit um, the upper and lower halves of the wings are just fine um, nothing really any difference I would say as far as improving the fit uh, one over the other. Need to build more stuff, yes, for sure. I would say if I was going to compare the fit between this kit and the Academy for the the lower half and the upper half. This one just has more points for you to glue. It feels a little more solid. Um, where the Academy kit, like on the inside here, there was nothing to glue. It's just open an open cavity like this. Um, whereas the Tamiya has gives you a couple of places that you can put some glue and make it just a little bit more solid of a piece. Um, I'd say that's the biggest difference so far. It's um, not to say it didn't fit together well, it's just, it, to me, it's giving you that little extra bit to glue. So that you have something to glue. Just gonna hold that for a second, even though it's a quick setting, still gonna hold this for a couple of seconds to uh, make sure my two halves stay together. Let go and they stay together. Perfect. Okay. So let's find my other side. Make sure. Yeah, see I missed that one on here too. Plastic Alchemist, how are you? We're building the F4 Phantoms. Tamiya versus Academy. 
course the Academy one is an older kit from I think it's 2014 I am doing fantastic thank you very much One little spot I did forget to do on this wing is this little piece back here. So I do need to glue that, so I need to remember to go back to that piece as I go around here, adding more. these different contact points where you can put some glue down and make it nice and solid. It's really, that is a nice addition. So just want to hold it for a second here and let that glue do its thing. Just right in here. If I let go, it's just going to pop open. So I just want to make sure that I can let go of it and it's going to stay. You guys watching me live you didn't see this but uh, when I was putting the two halves of the Academy kit together I had some glue run out from the crease and went under my finger and I wound up getting a pretty good fingerprint in the top half of the wing that I wound up having to sand down and clean up. That was Richmond these days. Richmond is pretty good. We're not too hot, not too cold. It's been dry for like a good two weeks. Um, we've had some pretty good summer weather. We're talking about possibly some rain next week, so that's going to be good for the forest fires that uh, Canada's having quite the issue with this year. Um, yeah. But it hasn't been bad. It's been pretty good. Okay, so those are glued down. I'm happy with that. Looks pretty good. So, we got to add, that's it for this little section here. Okay, that's done. So now we move down to here and we got to add two little ovals that are going to go here and here. N25 and 26. So let's find those. Off of the N tree. N tree. There's N. 25 and 26. All right, so let's get 25 off of here. Twenty-five, twenty-six. We're gonna need M four. So might as well hunt for that. Right now. Here's our M. Is this little guy right there? Where'd my. Where did I put him? Oh, there they are. Alright. Let's clean this up. So, N25, got three little points under here, it's kind of funny, um, I've got three, three dots but only two holes, well it's obvious this one has to go this way, let's get that to line up means that little point has to go. It's funny that they have this as a separate piece to go in. Of 
course this is one of the holes that we drilled out and yet it doesn't really want to go did I maybe drill the hole too small? it's very very possible but that's not the end of the world we can always go bigger it's going smaller that's the trick that's the hard part right? but let's see if we can get just a, just a, oh it goes in right away <laughs> so I'll just make that a little bigger and in anticipation of the other side being the same let's try that now Hey, it fits now. Perfect. All right. Good stuff. So it takes a primer off with my fingers. <laughs> All right. Let's look at this side here. This one is really offset funny. I guess to really make make sure you're getting it in the right spot, let me just turn this around. And again, that's not quite big enough. So let's just make it big enough. Fixed. guy's got to go in just like this. So, again, I cannot complain at all about the way Tamiya gets everything to fit so flush and nice. It's just everything fits. And it's like so it's flush like I just gotta say wow <laughs> when I see that kind of fit that Tamiya does and you know it's not every kit they make is like this but this is fantastic okay so that kind of looks like crap that's what sandpaper and paint is all about fix that up later thank you airplanes for taking off while I'm talking away yeah in case you guys haven't guessed already I do live by the airport <laughs> so yeah Let's put that in there there we go okay so that is it and of course I didn't really notice but over here it does tell you to cut the little nub off that one end right there so yeah so that, just double checking, make sure I didn't miss anything. And um, looks like this page is finished. So, let's flip her over. I did miss something. B29, boom, right there. I missed that part. That's got to get put in. <laughs> in here, where uh, now it's going to be a bit of a challenge to, uh, to put it on. It looks like I need to, not with my paintbrush, it looks like I need to put it on right there. Let's get that. B29. Let's find that. Where's 
in a bee tree. B, 29 is this little guy right there. I totally missed this one. XF16. I gotta take a look at my color chart and see what XF16 is. I do not remember XF16. XF16 is flat aluminum. Okay, so painting this guy aluminum colored is going to be fun. So how are we going to set this? It's just going to go in. definitely should have put this in first, but it's fine. It sits just like that. So, let's paint that. bother it's such a small piece so that a minute to dry. Acrylics always dry so fast anyway, so don't have to worry about it. And give my brush a little wipe. Okay. Just going to have to give that a minute to dry, and then I'll put that on. Let's take a look at the next page here. Next page, we got to do some painting um, in here. This edge here, not this edge, but just in here, and on the tip, they want red. But I'm not ready to paint any of that, especially because when I spray paint this thing, I'm just going to totally wipe that red out. So there's no point in doing that. But our main fuselage, we can put our main fuselage on. So let's just do a little test fit here. We've got to line up. These holes back here are going to go right there and there. So there's our map. There's our guide points. Big little, big little, big holes right here are going to go into these little spots right there and there. So those are, that's our guide. <laughs> I, I just can't get over how well that just sat down in there. The first time test fitting is, oh, just, wow. Okay, nub marks I need me to clean up on each side here. <laughs> this amazes me how well this thing fits together. I'm just going to throw some glue on it now. Now I do like to use the thicker stuff for spots on the inside, like these guys, just to add a little bit more strength to it. And of course, if I could do get any oozing or seepage or anything like that, it, uh, 
you're never going to see it. But wow. I can only say wow. That's all I got is wow. God is wow. Because <laughs> the dividing seam is so, it's done so beautifully. It fits so well. I am using a little bit of pressure now just to get it to really see to where it's supposed to but that's really that's something I really cannot complain about so it looks like our next step as far as the Tamiya kit goes is uh, um, adding the underneath of the fuselage right there where I'm pointing with my pinky um, the front nose part Now with this top half done and assembled, it might be time to switch over to the Academy kit and see the difference. I mean, <laughs> I'm, well, I, the fit on this is just amazing to me, so I really can't. complain. I got nothing to complain about on this so far. This is really going together very beautifully and just flawlessly. Okay, let's add our little piece in there so before I forget all about it, add that guy in there. He's got to go in tucks in just underneath there like this so just kind of sits there like that just like that all right now he hasn't been forgotten. He's just there. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Beautiful. So if we grab our R3, have a look at that. QR and S are all in the same sprue here, they're just kind of divided up. But here's our R3. Our th our we want R5 also, it's going to go in that little hole. So where's number 5? There it is. like yeah they're telling me to cut those nubs off which I already did just by instinct <laughs> and 
then they want me to fill some things. Fill using putty. They want me to fill in the details here on these two parts. And I don't know why. I guess they've molded this for a different version other than the B. But we're doing the D anyway, so it's not really going to matter. A tiny little detail like that is kind of insignificant. So they even have a little they've specially shaped piece oh, that just like fell into its spot. <laughs> wow, Tamiya. You know, there's a guy on his got a YouTube channel and he talks about how these reasons why he he'll, he never builds Tamiya kits. And I got unfortunately I gotta pull this off because my cleanup job on this nub is subpar. Okay. Let's have another look here. Much better. Um, the guy hates Tamiya kits because they go together too easy. <laughs> that there's nothing to do on them is his argument. You just slap them together and they're perfect and he doesn't like that. Of course he builds stuff from scratch all the time too, so I guess I can see that why he would not like the fact that there's nothing to do, nothing to build on a Tamiya kit. Of course, his reasons for hating them are the same reasons why I love them. I'm not a sculptor. I'm not a scratch builder. And... You know, I basically just want them to look nice when they're when you look at them on the shelf, and I'm happy with that. Okay, that's in. Now, if I can find out where I put that other piece, this guy's got to go in right there. Just kind of drop into place just like that. And again, it's just perfectly flush. Perfectly flush. There we go. So, that's all together. Our upper and lower fuselage halves. I do have to fix that little spot. I'll get a clamp and I'll hold that after adding some more glue. But other than that, our upper and lower halves are together, and they are beautiful looking. And I cannot complain at all about the fit. It's awesome. Alright, let's put that aside. So next is going to be our intakes. But i got to paint those. I've got to get that done. Intakes on both sides, and then put those in. But that's going to have to be next time. So let's do a little quick comparison here. Um, obviously I didn't have, they've got these two halves a little bit different from the Tamiya to the Academy. This one comes back further all the way to here rather than just right there, right? But this is the entire half, it's not just a little section. Like, it, like this one was. The rest of it's all one piece, just like the Tamiya. Um, really, the only difference, the Tamiya flaps here, they go all the way to the back. This one, this piece is from the top half of the wing, not the bottom. That's really the only difference there. And obviously, the engines are the full engines with the nozzles on, on the Academy kit. And we haven't even touched nozzles with this thing yet. 
so yeah but guys I think that's where I am gonna end it for today and uh, we'll start doing some other stuff next time I believe the next step on the Academy kit is the ejection seats after putting all the engines in and putting that front part of the lower fuselage now we've got ejection seats and that's going to be next because they want them to go in with the same time that the upper fuselage goes together I don't think that's really going to be any hindrance or anything like that in fact actually before we go let's put that upper fuselage on there see how that's going to look see how that fits so let me just clean up my tamiya springs Here's the upper fuselage on the Academy kit, which of course I've, I've primered already. Now let's get this great big honking thing out of the middle. And there's nothing else other than this piece here, G20. big square piece right there G20 again I'm not going to be displaying the fueling nozzle in fact I believe this is where it gets fuel from now on the D I could be wrong I know that is one thing that was different and why somebody had mentioned on my YouTube channel which by the way hit that like button hit subscribe 80% of you are not subscribed, so do it. Uh, this just goes in like this. Yeah. it's nice and flush can't really complain about that there's a little tiny little bit of a lip here that I can feel but not a big deal I mean if I was really really worried about it I could press it push out from the from behind it and make it flush but it's not that big of a deal okay so that's in um, let's put this down on the fuse on the lower half and see how much or how little of a pain I got going on here. Um, looks like this part here and these two halves are going to go right on, on that part there that we glued down before. So that's our guiding points. And that, of course, makes it a bit of a challenge. This is. Um, bit of a compression fit. It's okay though. I don't know if I'm lined up. It's not. <laughs> I don't know if this has to go in. Ah, there we go. The trick is to get it to sit down inside the wings. There we go. And obviously that's not a good sign. Why doesn't that fit? Cockpit binding a little bit. That's going to take some clamping to get that to stay down. It is lined up. It's just that's really tight there. That's going to be fun. The back is lined up. The back is doing pretty good. It's 
so it's going to be one of those glue a little bit let it set glue a little bit more let it set more that kind of thing so I'll start from the back and I'll slowly work my way forward That's really all we can do, right? So, with that, that's pretty much it. We're going to continue gluing this, um, working our way forward. Let this back part dry. That's sitting nicely, but I gotta kind of work my way forward like this with it. And uh, yeah, whereas obviously the Tamiya kit went to bed, went together perfectly. This one did not. It's gonna take a little bit more loving <laughs> to get it to to meet together properly but that's where i'm going to leave it for today guys um we're getting there they're, they're starting to, to they're starting to look like airplanes and uh yeah so you guys watching me live head on over to my youtube channel and check out all my videos that i've got there you can see all kinds of other builds that i've done um, you can also check out my Instagram and uh, where I put still pictures of all the stuff that I've built in the past and uh, all that fun stuff. If you're checking me out on YouTube, hit that like button, hit subscribe, all that lovely stuff. As I mentioned before, I think there's something like 86% of guys who watch me on YouTube are not subscribed. So just hit that subscribe button. Help me out, you know? Throw me a bone. <laughs> Anyway, I do want to thank you guys for watching and thank you for coming out. Um, thank you Raiders. That was really awesome and surprising. And uh, yeah, thank you for all the support and uh, all the comments. You guys are really awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, that's where we're going to leave it for today. And uh, yeah, so um, we'll continue on this next time. And uh, until next time, we'll see you all around.